Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Troy Dawson. I do work for Red Hat, but I am not working on KDE or Apple as part of Red Hat. Uh, I'm doing this presentation as a Fedora KDE SIG member, as well as an Apple package maintainer. To talk about KDE and Apple, let's go back and do a little history. So up and through RHEL 7, RHEL had KDE in it. Uh, that was great. I, I've been a KDE user since RHEL had KDE in it, which was a long time ago. By the time RHEL 7 came along, we had QT 3, 4, and 5 in RHEL, as well as the KDE desktop. The problem is, is it wasn't very maintained. It wasn't updated at all. And once you got it, you know, after 10 years, the KDE desktop was pretty stale. But it always worked, usually. Uh, part of my job at Red Hat now is I take Fedora and turn it into RHEL. I was part of the team that did this for RHEL 8. And one of the first things in my job as we were doing that was to yank KDE Plasma Desktop out of RHEL 8. Now, there's a distinction. There's the Qt libraries that KDE builds off of. And then there's the KDE Plasma Desktop. And I'm going to be talking about three things during this talk. There's the Qt the libraries. There's Plasma. And then there's the full KDE Plasma Desktop. There's three things I'm going to be talking about as we get through here. If you're a KDE user, um, I think you know what I'm talking about. If not, hopefully I make sense. But for RHEL 8, they pulled out the KDE Plasma Desktop but left in to RHEL 8 QT5. Uh, this is because customers wanted QT5 and the libraries, they were building things, but evidently those customers didn't care enough about the, the, the desktop. So that was my job. I had very mixed emotions about this. Um, I'd been a KDE user most of my uh, Fedora time, which is getting up into decades, in plural. Um, so I felt bad taking it out of rail, but on the other side, I'm also an Apple person. And I was excited at the same time because, hey, now that it's not in rail, I or the KDE SIG or the Fedora KD community can now build it in Apple. And so, like I said, it's very mixed emotions. Um, it also involved a lot of work at work pulling KDE out and then after work building it for <laughs> for the same thing. It was a complicated uh, six months. Now, now that KDE is actually in Apple, there's a few things we can do and I'm excited for this. One of the major things is updates. I was really glad when the, the KDE SIG uh, talked with me and I talked with them and we had, there was a nice discussion. Actually, I'm part of the KDE SIG, but we, as we started talking about it, about updates, uh, Neil brought this up, says, hey, we should do updates more often. And then the discussion was, how often should we do updates in for KDE Plasma Desktop uh, in Apple? And after the discussion, we decided on a one-year process. So we'll leave the KDE Plasma Desktop stable for one year, and then we'll update it to whatever is the, the latest stable Fedora release. So right now, that is Fedora 34. And we are currently in the process of doing that. Doing a one-year cadence allows enterprise users, because to have stability, but things get updated because if KDE gets updated, goes too long without an update, 
then when you do do an update, you're going to break a lot of things. We figured one year is is a fast enough cadence to keep up with KDE and Plasma and the desktop without, so you're still able to do a relatively simple update, but you're you're getting things refreshed. And, and these enterprise users are able to have a stable desktop during the rest of the year. Now, as bug fixes come along, we will update to the latest, like Fedora or uh, 5.22.3, maybe .4. But as, if there's major bugs and or security issues, we do reserve the right to do a an actual version update, um, just because it's quite possible that we'll have to do an update in between that one year. But for the most part, we're going to try to do just a one year update. So where does that bring us now? So currently right now, RHEL is RHEL 8, which is RHEL 8.4, has QT 5.12. I'm gonna be quoting a lot of numbers here, for, so just bear with me. Now, the plasma that is in Apple 8 is 5.18. The whole plasma desktop, which has the K5 and KF5 and all those others, those are different versions, but we're just going to talk about the plasma for right now. Plasma is at 5.18, and that's on regular rail uh, 8.4. Now, CentOS Stream 8, which is going to become rail 8.5, has updated to QT 5.15, just in time for us to do this update, which is exciting. Uh, very much thanks to I. Is it I? I if I call your name wrong, Jan. I, I that's how I would pronounce your name was Jan. Uh, I just realized I've never called him by his name. Um, anyway, CentOS Stream already has the QT. 5.15 update. If you saw my previous talk, we talked about Apple Next, which is Apple built off of CentOS Stream, and it's meant to be layered on top of Apple. So Apple Next, we have updated it to the latest that is in uh, Fedora 34, which is uh, KDE Plasma 5.22, and we've also updated the entire desktop experience. So it's uh, Fedora 34 desktop experience. So that is actually in place right now. If we have time, I might do a little demo of it. To, Because I was in another talk about Wayland and somebody asked, can you do that? Can you boot it in both X11 and Wayland? And the answer is yes, and we'll do a demo for that. So that's where we're at now. So what about in the future, let's say five months from now. Where are we going? Now, RHEL 9 uh, is supposed to be released within a year. And that means CentOS Stream 9 is technically already out and available, but it hasn't reached beta, so there hasn't been any wide announcements, but it is available. And the, the RHEL 9 and the RHEL 8 both have the same QT version, which is 5.15. Now, the Apple 8 and the Apple 9, at least Apple Next 9, will also have the same version. We're going to try to keep, excuse me very much, we're going to try to keep both of those in sync so that it's easier for not only the users, but the maintainers um, will be keeping the Apple 8 and the Apple 9 KDE Plasma desktops in sync eight, until 8 starts falling out of maintenance mode. Uh, we plan on keeping these up to date. We have also talked to Jan, who is the QT maintainer for RHEL 8, and he is going to try. Okay, I won't put words in his mouth, but the plan is for him to try to keep updating QT on that one-year cadence. Uh, there is no commitment there. And 
Uh, I can't promise that. But we, as the, <laughs> as the Apple and QT SIG, or KDE SIG, uh, are planning to do a one-year cadence. Uh, you might notice there's a question mark after 5.22. I'm not quite sure when 5.23 is going to come out. It might hit um, Fedora 34 before we do the switch over. Meaning when, when RHEL 8.5 comes out, we're going to switch everything from Apple Next over into to regular Apple. And whatever version of Plasma we have at that point is what we will bring over and is also what will be in Apple Next 9 for the next year. So that is the, the current plan. So let's see. Someone says Plasma 5.23 releases early enough. It'll be part of Fedora 36 GA. Oh, so it might be a little... That might, okay, let's just plan on 5.22. <laughs> um, another thing that we are doing is we're putting this, this list of packages in Fedora ELM Extras. Uh, the, the short summary is Fedora ELM is basically Rawhide. It's built on the Koji packages, on the Koji, Koji build infrastructure, but it has the rail flags turned on. So usually if a package is being built and it goes through the spec file, it says, if Fedora do this, if it's rail, do this. So it's running the exact same raw height, building the exact same raw height packages, but instead of the if Fedora, it follows the if rail path. Now Fedora ELN are for packages only going into rail. Fedora ELN extras is for packages that want to test the same thing. We are putting these packages, it's not in place yet uh, because Fedora ELN extras is not in place yet, but we have them already. This will allow us to test, um, excuse me, this will allow us to test, you know, upcoming packages in KDE packages built against RHEL as we're doing the, the rawhide stuff. The, this isn't going to be ground shaking things. Basically what that means is during that year of updates, we'll be able to, to fix the bugs that are failing on rail at the time, sometime during the year, instead of waiting until the end of the year and then fixing all the bugs at once. Uh, we'll see how that works out. I think it'll work out. If it doesn't, then maybe we'll, we'll we'll stop it. But hopefully that is something uh, something nice. Okay, this is a short talk, but I do also have a demo if people want to see the demo. Otherwise, we'll do questions and answers. People okay with with a demo? Ah. Uh, just going to show uh, X11 versus Wayland. Okay. Okay, so this is a CentOS Stream, CentOS Stream 8 uh, virtual machine. It has a KDE Plasma desktop installed on it. And if we look over here on the, oh, stop that. We have we can we have our choice of doing Plasma X11 or or Plasma Wayland. In the past, you know we could only do X11. Let's see what things look like for X11 if we log into it. And we can do things like open up Dolphin, open up Console. Open up Discover, and things are things look good. So, what is some of the things where, where it was crashing on Wayland? I want to. 
I'll show you one bug that's in Wayland. But if, if there's any others I wanted to look at, show it in X11 before. Okay, well, let's log off and log into Wayland. Log out. I think I've been talking too fast. Okay, so let's pick Wayland. Do our fancy password. And there we go. So go away. So here is one of the fun things. I, I this this was shown to me and I still see it. This isn't that big of a deal, but you'll notice that that's in the middle. It's not connected to the menu thing at all. Um, but we also have console, we have dolphin, we have discovery. Um, I, I don't have teams installed on here. Oh, this is a feature. Oh, clipboard issues. Okay. Let's try a clipboard thing. Let's, uh, do I have an editor at all? I can just use VI or something. Office. Um, if I don't have the key right, really? What about Kate? There we go. Let's do Kate. And blah, blah, blah. blah. Let's try. Man, let's cut and paste. That worked. Let's do it. Cut and paste with Control Alt C, Control or Control D. Hmm. I'm still, I'm getting it's work. Cut and paste for me is working. Yep. Did you did double or once? Uh, what do we mean by double or once? A copy shortcut. Uh, well, this is a this is a this is a single click. Oh, well, yeah, but that was two different pastes. One was using the keyboard. Oh, you can't see my fingers. <laughs> One was using the keyboard. The other was using the mouse. Uh, so this is with this is doing the here. Let's do a highlight. This is using my hand, control C. I'll go down here, control V. And the other one is using the mouse. So hand stays up here. And I, I use the middle, middle button and the middle button single click works. But uh, I can understand if there's cut and paste issues. Uh, so, anyway, this is one of the short talks, but I wanted people to just know it's out there. You can do Wayland. You can do X11. Uh, Wayland issues, I believe we're having the same bugs in Fedora Wayland as we are in in this Apple Wayland. Or, no, you said it's because we have an older Wayland. Okay. You're right. It's That is the thing. Um do we have a bugzilla open for 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 that? If not, I will I will open one for the. This one is is such a minor thing and yet irritating at the same time. <laughs> it's like it should be connected to my menu. Anyway. Um, any other questions or answers? <laughs> yep. So anyway, we the one thing I wanted to do about the with with this talk was to let people know that we do have a plan. The plan is to update once a year um, 
according to Apple policy, we have to warn people. And so uh, I'm telling people up front that their KDE Plasma desktop will get updated once a year. I'm trying to uh, let as many people know as possible. Uh, but anyway, we'll have, we can have more questions. We can do some more demo stuff. Blue screen. Hover your, let's see, check app preview when you hover your mouse over an icon on taskbar. Okay. Oh, that's another interesting one. Yeah, that does no good, does it? Okay, is that a, is that a bug that's been filed? We'll have to, to look on that. Okay. Any other fun bugs? Now, actually, now I'm gonna. I want to log into X11 just just to uh, see what that looks like. Okay. Oop. But I personally am looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to 8.5. I run rel on my desktop. Um, okay, so let's open these up. Do we get the blue screen? No, we get an icon, which is okay. An icon is better than a blue screen, in my opinion. But yeah, we get the icon. The icon isn't that useful, but it's better than blue screen. Oh, where did, oh, sorry. <laughs> meant, to, meant to shrink this down and I shrunk the whole thing down. That's right, Neil has the hyperscale workstation I, I've been meaning to ask, what does hyperscale mean? Does that mean it runs on big machines, like lots of CPUs? Or you guys are just drink a lot of caffeine when you're working on that? Or... I, I really don't know. I should look it up. It means all those things. Oh, OK. Well, I... I'll ask David. So, well, uh, the time is up. Do we have any more questions before we we break and, and head over to the final closing closing talks? All right. Well, I'm going to close this. Thank you very much everyone for for coming and keep using kde it's a great desktop but also run what you want to run i don't want to pressure anybody into kde but i think it's a great desktop bye